So guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to clean your membrane keyboard. Um, you know, just cleaning it down from the keycaps, you know, cleaning that, as well as your, like, the frame of it underneath all the keycaps. The only two things that you're going to need for it is really just, like, a jug and then a little sort of brush or scrubbing brush that you probably will have for your nails, cleaning, dishes, stuff like that. You can find them pretty much in, in your house. You most likely will have them. Obviously, you've got a measuring jug. Fill it up pretty much almost full or just over halfway, depending on the size of your keyboard. I have 100%, so I filled it almost full and then dunked them all in. Um, and then you can use a paintbrush as well, which I'll, you'll see later on in the video. But um, other than that, you know, that's all you really need. If you do find the video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We do have a bunch of other content, so make sure to go check that out. Some of it may be useful to you, so just, you know, go check it out. It won't hurt you. But um, other than that, I'll see you throughout the video. So obviously one of the most tedious parts of cleaning a keyboard is probably putting the key, key, key caps back on and taking them off. It's the most tedious thing I think I've ever done. Taking each individual key cap off took so long. My fingers were literally bleeding after it, especially when they, because obviously it's membrane, they're a bit harder to take off than normal ones. Some key caps do come with a key cap puller, and if they do, lucky you, because um, it's, it's really easy, then you can actually do it. I, I also would recommend, you know, actually taking the time to do it, you know, properly, put them into a pile or in a bowl so then you can easily just pour it out. I grabbed like a little nail brush or something and then I just completely sweep down my whole keyboard, made it look all clean. As you can see, there's so much dust, but this part's pretty easy. Just the keycaps are just mainly the fid fiddly part and that takes a while. You may want to leave your keyboard out to dry after once you've done this. Would recommend don't, don't use like water or anything like that to clean your keyboard, anything like that. I used a dry brush. Um, I went downstairs, grabbed a little measuring jug, grabbed it, filled it up with almost to the top, like maybe two thirds of the way up, and then I put all the keycaps on. Obviously, depending on the size of your keyboard, whether you have a TKL, 60%, uh, 85%, 100% keyboard, you know, depending on the size, um, obviously you're going to need more water or less. I pretty much did a perfect amount. It fit, every single keycap went under, and it was it was, it was was just enough. I would recommend putting them in a bowl so then you can just quickly scoop it in as... I was very unorganized, and I've ended up losing a keycap. I no longer have a Q keycap anymore. So I'm just going to take one from the other side of my keyboard and slap it there. Um, by the way, if you do lose one, hopefully you have a keyboard lying around. Some Not all membrane keycaps do go with each membrane keyboard. It's not They're not all the same. Some are different sizes, some are different styles. So make sure that you don't lose a keycap, because if you do, it can be a pain to try and fix. If you guys do want me to do a video on how to clean a keyboard or a mechanical one, make sure to comment down below. I, I'm always looking to improve my content and, you know, make stuff that you guys would think would be useful. With a mem with a mechanical one, it's pretty much the same process. You're just changing the switches and obviously you've got to do it slightly different because you have switches instead of membrane, um, stuff like that. So just use your hands, use the brush, or you can use a paintbrush, which I use in a bit. Start around. I use the paintbrush to sort of get rid of and, you know, sort of move all the ones from the bottom to the top and... Move the top ones to the bottom, because the top ones have pretty much had a pretty decent one. Then I get a paintbrush, stick it in, swirl it around, create sort of like a whirlpool. And it's it's pretty, it's, you know, you just take like one or two minutes doing it. You'll know when to stop when you see quite a few bubbles doing it. Also, be careful not to fling a few out. That's probably how I lost some. As you can see, one of my space bars cut is like about to fall out in a minute. So just slow down and stop, because, you know, it's kind of getting a bit far. You'll know when to stop, as you can see, there's a lot more bubbles now as it's been moving around and the soap's been working pretty well. Just go ahead and check one or two of the keycaps, like on the uh, underside or the inside of where it, the dust would be. And just see if there's any um, anything dirt and if it's clean. It's a lot harder to clean black keycaps uh, than, white one, than white ones, because white ones tend to show dirt a lot more easier. So if you are doing a black one, you may want to do it for a bit longer, just because it's kind of harder to see the dirt. So just check one or two keycaps, see if there's any dirt in there. I checked that one, it's pretty decent. Um, two of the keycaps, check like two or three, just to make sure. So I check both of them, they're pretty good. So I just pour all the water out. Make sure you get all the water. Just be careful not to pour any of the keycaps out because you could lose one if there isn't a drain plug. So just do it nice and slowly. Cover off the tip so none of the keycaps can fall out and then pour it out. I I have like my little uh, windowsill which I created like a little workbench for where I put all my keycaps on. Just slapped them all out, done it, folded it up, covered them all up in my blanket, and then I sort of just rubbed them around for quite a bit. Just make sure you get every single one in. You don't want to miss any. And then just, you know, rub it, dry it, get rid of as much of the wetness as you can around the outside, make sure it's nice and dry. And then obviously on the in, uh, on the underside, um, on like on the inside of the keycap, which you don't touch, there will still be bubbles and dirt and water there. So 
you know, you're going to have to really get under there and stuff. You can use a paintbrush to get them. Lay them all flat facing upwards with um, so the sun can dry them. Or you can get a hairdryer if you need, if you don't have any other cables to use uh, meanwhile. So you can get a hairdryer, make sure you dry it. The most tedious process, once again, putting them all back on. Um, if you do not remember where your keycaps are, well, that's going to be a pain. Because um, you can't Google, you know, a uh, keycap uh, layout for your keyboard, stuff like that. So make sure you've done that before and taken a picture before. If you do want a little tip on how to do it, if you have a paintbrush like we used before, there's the little holes where the keycaps get pushed down in. Just get the paintbrush, push it down on the little rubber thing on the inside where the connector is, and then it will pop up on the screen of a letter. Um, if you're just on Word or something, press it, and then it will pop up. So then you know what keycap goes there. So I'll find a letter, press where roughly I thought it was. Um, and then I put it on. Obviously, a few of them I could do because I know which I use a lot. So, Wasserd, Shift, Control, Spacebar, stuff like that. You also want to be careful with the stabilizers, stuff like that. Make sure it's, you know, fully dry because otherwise some of the wetness can go down and fry the motherboard. Or the PCB on the inside. It's not really a motherboard, but the PCB, you could fry it. And you don't really want that as, you know, you may not... You may be an expensive keyboard or maybe a really nice keyboard and you don't want to have to buy another one. Um, as you can see, the keyboard does look a lot more cleaner and the keycaps do look a lot nicer you know feeling them now they do feel a lot cleaner they don't feel all sort of lumpy and stuff like that not really lumpy but they do feel like it make sure they are 100 percent dry i know that some of my keycaps are still a bit wet um so just make sure you've thoroughly dried them stuff like that make sure all of the stabilizers are plugged in for the spacebar enter key backspace they're the ones that tend to have stabilizers mainly uh, any sort of long keycap so shift as you can see tab doesn't always have one but some do Stuff like that. The keyboard layouts will change um, to the different style of keyboards. Um, as you can see here, here I'm using the um, the uh, paintbrush t uh, paintbrush trick. Um, different keyboards have different layouts. So my keyboard is an American keyboard, so I have an American layout. Uh, obviously, you've got different kind of layouts. You've got you know American, you've got UK style. So you've just got to make sure you know which one. Just take a picture of your keycaps before. As you can see, I'm missing my one keycap, which is really really annoying. As my keycap, my keyboard looks really good, but now that that's there, it's just it's ruined it. Thank you guys for watching. If you did find this helpful and you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and comment on how you found the video. If you felt like I missed anything or if you would like me to do anything else, make sure to comment it because I will, you know, I pay attention to the comments. I will reply to as many as I can, so make sure to ask away any questions, and I'll see you all in the next one.